We're here at Goodwood Festival of Speed. I'm here with Horacio from BMW Blog. Here we're in the future of BMW with the Vision Neue Classe. And when was the first time you actually were able to see this? So actually it was a progression because I seen first iteration of this car, which was called the Vision D. And then they, that car evolved into the Vision Neue Classe. So if I go back, that was CES 2023. Then I saw it for the first time this one in September last year. So this is going to be pretty much the preview of the electric 3 Series is what everyone has been talking about. Exactly. So what BMW does, they have this you know, vision stage, which is this car. Then there will be a concept car. Then eventually the car will launch in 2026. But what they wanted to do with this car was really to kind of highlight their new design language. This is a brand new, not just car, it's a brand new design language, brand new architecture, brand new electric motors, batteries, everything. It's the biggest project BMW has done since the original Neue Klasse which was back in the mid 60s when they basically reinvigorated the brand and restarted over making a small mid-sized vehicle with a sporty nature. You know, from what I remember, Kai Langer, the head of BMW I Design, he said that, you know, he had an E30 back in the day and he wanted to evoke the same spirit, not just the three box design also, but also keeping the same, like the belt line on his car to match the door sill on his E30. But at the same time, he didn't want it to go back in time with a retro styling, but rather keep it fresh. And you can see, you know, the fact that it's a, it's a kind of like a retro design, but not not overly done like I said before and also it's looking towards the future because they use fewer parts on the car and we can move around and talk about that but even like on the side this is actually a functional piece it's the same thing as on the Nostakana 5 series or on the iX flow essentially they can use this technology the e-ink technology to display like information and to reduce parts also if you look right here they were trying to keep the iconic Hofmeister King but they were using this e-ink technology to mimic that and if you move to the front I mean the front end clearly completely different right I mean it's not something that you see on any car today and once again reduction of parts it's what they told me and you can see sim simple parts I mean you got the hood basically you got a simple spoiler on the bottom and that's it one of my favorite elements is the grill it really harkens back to some of the vintage designs of BMW and it's also a physical and a digital grill yeah so they call this the fidgetal I guess that's the <laughs> name of the uh, of the kidney grill but you can see reduced parts once again they use you know the light technology to reflect also the slats inside right there you can see that but yeah. they also use the still the double headlamps you can see right here there is no logo that's you know attached to it it's really engraved into yeah, the hood into the hood and it is because of this circular circularity they have with BMW they want to recycle as many materials as possible you know on camera it might look like this is hundreds of parts but it's actually one sub-assembly headlight on each side so it's physically two BMW part numbers that they would put into the yep. front exactly and so. you can see also the front bumpers I mentioned earlier a single piece very simple of course it's gonna change into production but for now of course they wanted to emphasize once again the reduction of elements on the car we can move to the side and then talk a little bit more about the design but clean shapes this you know not too sophisticated of course, you still got this line right there that kind of breaks down the height yeah, of the car I mean, a little bit. Also, the front really has, I mean, front and rear really has a wide body sort of haunch to the design. Because it's an electric car, they managed to push the cabin a little bit forward more than you will see it on, on other cars. That increases space in the car of this size, but also makes the car look a little bit sporty, I would say, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, uh, also, yeah. I mean, with it being electric, there's no fuel tank, which is normally under the rear seats. So we're able to bring that back down and put a lot of room, similar to the iX. Of course, you can see, you know, the greenhouse, it's quite big. Big, so they, there is a lot of light going inside the car. Once again, it's, it plays well with the electromobility aspect of you know any car because you want to show as much light as possible inside to make it feel eco-conscious and so on and so forth. But let's see if you can spot something that's unique. I mean, again, with the simple simplification of the lighting, again, two sub-assemblies, two part numbers in the back. All right, so it looks, right? So simple, right? There's a single piece right here, another piece right there. That's engraved, but what they managed to do, instead of having another spoiler on top, they managed to turn the edge of the headlight into an actual Integrated. spoiler. So this is an aerodynamic feature as well. It's not just, you know, styling, but it's also functional. So right now there is no need to have another, another piece, piece on top of it. Yeah, and you can see right yeah. here, I mean, it's... So uh, it's a taillight, it's a brake light, yeah. and it's a half of a spoiler. Exactly. Yeah. The only difference is, you know, compared to other BMWs, you know, they still retain this L shape a little bit, but they have once again this double, you know, icon element that's specific to BMW cars. You can see the diffuser too, right? Simple, aerodynamic, once again, quite, quite cool. But I do want to show you something actually that's pretty cool on the car, which took me a while to actually see. So if you move to this side, I'm going to ask you one more time, see if, if you can spot the detail, because I did and they had, they had to explain it to me also. So let's see if you can spot something here that's interesting. Not easy, right? No, it's not easy. So here is the shape 
of the charging port. You see the angle? So I was gonna say. It matches that angle right right there. So instead of making this, you know, squarish design, I'll say, well, let's make it as symmetric as possible. Every time they use these kind of shapes, it kind of gives you the idea of speed of a movement. little bit, right? Movement, so, exactly. Yeah, when the car's sitting here. And even here, you can see this door kind of mimics the Hofmeister King as well. So lots of interesting details, a lot more than I know, honestly. Clearly that you know, these designers know a lot more than I do, but some things that they've explained to me. But I think with that being said, maybe we hop inside and talk about the technology because that's completely new in the car too. Yeah, let's do it. So the first thing I notice about this interior is it reminds me of the current IX with this dash that goes all the way to the glass and it has the two parts and it looks like they've used a lot of Alcantara, but there's also a really nice corduroy textile design, which reminds me of the 1960s Neue Classic cars in period. It's not even just about the in period of 1960s, but it's really the fact that they wanted to use this corduroy and especially with this color, because it reminds them of the old school sofas and couches of the 60s and 70s. And it gives you that feeling of warm, you know, of, you know, being at home. And that's exactly why they wanted to use this one. I asked the same question, like why this color, why this material? And of course it's a sustainable material too. So that's why I wanted to use it but they also feel like this will might come back in style once again i think so and also if you notice on some of the older vintage racing cars you'll have a passenger seat in a leather or a vinyl but the driver's seat will be in corduroy for more grip for performance so that's a really neat kind of touch that they added with the designer it's quite spacious i'm gonna say so spacious i mean what i'm one 0.9 meters tall, 6263, six, extremely spacious. The cabin is pushed forward quite a bit, as we mentioned earlier. So it this is going to be a very spacious I mean, car. There's no transmission tunnel and a ground up EV build from BMW. So all of this area, there's a void, there's nothing. You can actually put cargo underneath there, similar to the IX that there is now. And also where the cameraman's sitting is a lot more pushed back and a lot lower to the ground which makes a car that looks very small from the outside have a ton of room on the inside. And how, how about the gear shifter? I like it, it looks kind of similar to what's out there now. A lot of people want to have that gear knob to grab okay, onto. The and it's a switch. On this side is also a button for the park. Exactly, fewer pieces, right? So they're trying to use one particular switch or button to do multiple functions and have as little as possible parts on it. But let me ask you another question. What's different about this steering wheel? Well, if you call those a spoke, but it looks like a two spoke, that's a horizontal design or a vertical design. Let me ask you this. Why do you think they have this one here? Because they never have that spoke right there, never. And it looks weird. It looks like it's been tilted a little yeah. bit, right? I'm not sure. I didn't know either. But honestly, because there is no speedometer behind the steering wheel, there is no <laughs> need to see through. You're right. So then I asked, so how do you see, you know, the speed and all of that, well, that's why they have this new technology called the panoramic display, panoramic vision actually. And it's going to be not just in the new classic cars, it's going to be in actual ICE cars as well in the future. In so essentially it's, you know, they're displaying all the information that was on the speedometer, on the dashboard right there, onto that panoramic display. And then of course you have it here as well. It's a demo here, so we can't really play around with it, but it's the next generation iDrive system, probably iDrive 10, iDrive X. Of course, they're going to play around with the height of that. You can minimize the information that you can see on there, so it's not going to be over loading but what's cool about this unfortunately I can't show it here uh, but you can actually swipe the information from here onto the panoramic display so let's say awesome. you pulled up some direction you can just do this it's gonna go on there or you, if, if you pulled up something you know yeah, like, your music like app. you want to have your music up yeah. there you can see it also what's new in this one once again they changed the design of this one right so no more curved display that runs across this is gonna be you know this unique shape centralized a, design yeah and it's it's uniquely shaped uh, also for ergonomics reasons they did some testing to make sure that the driver can actually easily reach the screen because sometimes with the curve display you got to reach like this and it's not very ergonomic with this one they did some testing to make sure that it's easier to reach the screen and of course you know to look nice I, I believe it's an OLED display but I'm not entirely sure so yeah, I mean also I noticed the windshield line is much higher than on other BMWs it is I mean it's still a concept car so I'm assuming it might change it a little bit I mean yeah. even from this angle, you know, it's a little bit distracting there. So I'm assuming they're gonna play around with the height of that. I think you can adjust the height also, but once again, it's just a vision car for now, but quite unique. I mean, really nice materials. I mean, they're so nice. This car has been around the world for quite some time, but holds Yeah, they've up. held up really well. A lot of people have been in and out of the car. Yeah, so. and you can see right there also another cool design feature to rest your arm right there. So it's kind of scooped in a little bit, so that way you can just put your elbow right there. I mean, so many little details. Honestly, I don't even remember all, and I'm sure that I don't know all of them either. In the vision, Neue X, which is the SUV. Apparently this piece here is removable and it's a boom box, so you can take it with you. So that's really quite interesting as well, but very, very cool. I'm sure it will change quite a bit inside, but 
Nonetheless, some details like this one will probably stay, the screen will stay for short, panoramic vision as well. Well, I can't wait yeah. to see the concept, which will we see a concept, I think, beginning part of next year, 2025? Probably, I mean, car comes out in 26. I'm assuming they will use CES as the platform to show this. They did it with a D also, so probably that's where we're gonna see the concept. Then probably towards the end of next year, early 26, we'll see the actual production series car. I'm Quite really looking forward times. to it, so. Now that we've seen the Vision Noir Classic up close and personal, let me know in the comments what you guys think of the future of BMW.